Hello YouTube and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by Excellence. Today we're going to be taking a look at pivot tables. Alright, so first things first, an ordinary table looks something like this. Now here we have a list of people and these are meant to represent purchases that they made. We have the sex, age, city, amount and so on for a range of different sales. Um, this is just something I threw together, so forgive me if that doesn't quite make sense. And, and a table like this is great in the fact that, you know, you have all the information for each sale, but you can't actually do any meaningful analysis on a table like this. It's very difficult to try and do some comparisons between cities or categories, um, etc. So the only way really you'd be able to do it would be to do some kind of sum if statement. So for example... Let's do by city. No, sorry, let's do that again. Let's first take a list of the cities and we'll just quickly filter that. Move duplicates. Okay. So if we were to do a sum if with the cities and we want to sum the amount, then we can do that like that. And it's how I've done a lot of analysis in the past. Uh, for a long time, I didn't really like using pivot tables. However, if we were to add another city, then we would have to go through all our analysis tables and add the city to each one. It's not dynamic. It doesn't update very easily. So pivot tables can just be a lot easier in that regard. Okay, so how do we create a pivot table? Well, to start, we just need to click anywhere within our range of data that we want to use in the pivot table. Um, you can select the entire thing if you'd like, but it's not needed. As Excel is pretty good at working out what range you want to use. So we go insert and click pivot table. Once you've done that, you'll get this pivot table dialog box. I have a couple of options here. So the first one is about your range. As you can see, Excel's picked it all up. But if it hadn't, if it had missed a column or some rows, then we can easily just go back in and select those for it. We could have used an external data source and the next option is where you want to put the pivot table. It's defaulting your worksheet. If we wanted to put it on an existing worksheet or on this worksheet, then we could do that quite easily. But it's generally best to just put it in your worksheet and I'll show you why later on. Um, so that's it. And the last option down here, we don't really need to worry about. So let's just click OK. So Excel has automatically created a sheet for for us so I'll just change that to um, sales pivot table now we have our pivot table here on the left hand side there's no information in this currently so to add information we just use this fields panel that's on the right hand side here if you have clicked on the pivot table then it should appear and when you click somewhere else that's not the pivot table then it will disappear if you have clicked inside the pivot table and it's not showing for some reason then you need to go to the analyze tab and click field list so on this fields panel um, at the top here we just have the list of fields and these are the column headers from our original table so if we jump back up here these become the fields that are available to us on the pivot table and these four sections down the bottom these are where we put these fields to create the pivot table. Uh, these are fairly self-explanatory. We have filters when we want to filter by an item. Columns means that it will put each of the unique values from one of these fields um, along the top as a column header. The rows section means that it will put each of the unique values from one of the fields down the left hand side as a row value. And this value section will either sum or count the items uh, within the field. So for example, if we were to drop city into the rows section, then we have each of the cities from the previous table down the left hand side here. Now if we wanted to add some more information, we could say add the sale amount into this values section. And we now have a sum of the sales for each of the cities with a total at the bottom. So since the sale amount is a number field from the previous table, uh, Excel has automatically done a sum on this. If instead we wanted a count, then we can click this drop down arrow here, click value field settings. 
and simply change that to count. You would have also seen there was a number of other options there, uh, such as average, max, min, etc. So if we were to choose average, now we have the average sale amount for each of the sales that were in Auckland, say, or each of the cities, with the average of all of them down the bottom. Instead of clicking on this little drop down arrow, you can also just double click on the column header and that also bring up the value field settings. I think for this we want the sum, so let's throw that in there. And so now we have the sum of all the sales for each of the cities. If we wanted a bit more of an in-depth look at this, we could say take the department and also drop that below the cities into the row section. And now we have a breakdown of each of the cities by each of the departments with a total for the city down the bottom. If instead I wanted a breakdown of the departments by city, then I could simply swap these two fields around and put the department above the city. Now we have each department broken down by the city with the total for clothes at the bottom and food and so on. And we can continue to add fields, as many fields as we like, um, into this row section. So let's say I want to add the age in there, then I will throw age there below city. Now we have each department broken down by each city, which is then broken down by each age. And you'll notice that not every city has each of the ages. Um, and that's because Excel only puts in the item if there's a value for it. Since nobody age 29 brought anything in Christchurch, then it's not showing. So you notice these little minus buttons next to each of the next to each of the groups, and this simply allows us to collapse the fields down so that we can roll things up and get a broader look. You can click each of them or simply go to the analyze tab and click the collapse field button. Now that has collapsed all the cities. And if I was to select one of the departments and click collapse again, then it has collapsed all of the departments. This is a great way for, you know, giving yourself a good overview look, but then being able to drill down inside the items to get a more in-depth understanding of where the numbers come from. So uh, at the moment, we've got a pretty one-dimensional table here. Uh, we just have everything going downwards. If instead we wanted to go in two dimensions, then, then we could take the department field and drop that into the column section. And now we have each of the departments along the top here. And down the left, we still have each of the cities with each of the ages beneath it. You also notice that there's a number of blank fields, and that's just because there is no value for there. If we wanted to show zeros instead of blanks, then we could go to the pivot table options and simply enter a value in here for the empty cell show option. So we click zero, then we'd have zeros everywhere. Probably doesn't look as good. It's a bit messy, so we'll just go back and change that to blank. All right, so we have the values here. Uh, that's all fine and dandy. Uh, let's say we want to have a count as well. So the number of sales that we have, not just the total amount of the sales. All we need to do is now drop another field into this value section. We could drop in the sale amount again and then just change it to count. Um, or if we just drop in any text field, then it will automatically do a count on that. So say cashier, which is just the name, let's drop that in. Um, and now Excel has automatically done a count. So now we have for clothes, sum of sale amount, count of cashier, food, we have sum of sale amount and count of cashier. Now this count of cashier doesn't sound very good. It's actually the number of sales. So we can simply just rename that easy enough, just the number of sales. There we go. And you'll see that it's now changed all the way across. Let's do the same for the sum. So let's just put total sales. Let's bring those in a little bit and voila. So these cells, although they're in a pivot table, are just like any other cells in Excel, you can format them however you want. So we can select these and make them a dollar value. Instead of selecting the entire row like that, you can just click above the column and you will select all of the columns that are the same as what you've selected. So I've clicked on total sales and it's selected all total sales columns. So I can make those all dollar values. If I was to click above, say one of the 
departments, then it would select both of the columns for that department. Um, this does look a little bit confusing having the number of sales next to the next total sales. So I might just swap those around and put sales after the number of sales. So now we have for each department, the number of sales and then the total. And you can see pivot table is really easy just to change things around and make it look how you want it to look. No having to move columns around yourself manually. You can just simply move the fields around and it will automatically just adjust to what you do. So that's basically setting up a pivot table. A couple of neat things you can do with this. So if we go into Auckland here, we'll see we have each of the ages. We have some pretty ugly looking data because there's not, just not that many sales for each of the ages for each category. So what we can do is actually group these together, group these different ages together. So just simply by clicking on one of the ages, I can now right click and say group. And Excel has decided that maybe we should start at 13. I'm just going to go down to 11. We can go up to 99, sure, and group by 10. Sounds about right. So if I click OK, now we have age ranges, say from 11 to 20, and it's now grouped all of the sales together for those age ranges. And we can actually do something similar with text fields as well. Back on my original table, I could have added the countries for each of these cities, but there's no need to go and amend my source table when I can just group them on the pivot table. So if I wanted to group these by country, then I would simply select each of the countries that I want to group. So Auckland, Christchurch, Taupo and Wellington and I was holding control as I was clicking the items. Um, now if I right click and group, now we have group one and it's got these four cities below it. I did the same with the Australian cities, I would click Brisbane, Melbourne, Perth and Sydney. Right click again, group. And then finally the last ones we'll just throw into UK. So select them all, right click, group. Now we have our three groups where we can just once again go in and rename them as we need. So New Zealand, Australia and United Kingdom. So now we have the countries as a group with each city and below that and within each city we now have age ranges. All right, next up, filters and slices. So we have the filter section here um, and to create a filter, it's as easy as just dropping a field or as many fields as we like into there. Um, so I can simply say select sex and drop that in there. And now we have a filter. So I can simply change this. Let me expand one of these first. I can simply change this filter to say female and all the numbers automatically just update. Um, if I wanted male, then I can choose male. And once again, the data updates. Go back to all, and voila. Now a slicer is very similar to a filter. Um, acts pretty much exactly the same way, except it just looks a bit different. So to add a slicer, we simply go to the Analyze tab and select Insert Slicer. Once again, we have all of our fields available to us. Um, just to note, City 2 is actually our country. Since we grouped the cities together, it's created Cities 2. So we will add a slicer for sex as well. Um, and this is the slicer. The only difference really is that we're able to resize it and move it around wherever we like. So if I select female, then we get all the sales data for females only. And it also changes the filter up here. And if I was to select male, then we get the sales data for males. Clear filter. So they're pretty basic really. And we can add as many filters or slices as we like. As we add more slices, then they will just add along the bottom here and the pivot table will move down. Uh, which reminds me because at the beginning I said that we should add the pivot table to a new worksheet. It's just easier that way. Um, and that's because pivot tables when you expand and collapse fields, they don't actually say move the rows down, they actually just take up additional space. So if we look at it with a collapse, we're only down to row nine. So if I had some information in these fields and then was to click expand, 
I get this error saying that it can't expand because there's already information there. And it'll either ask me to replace it or if I click cancel, it doesn't do anything. So it's just easier to have the pivot table on its own worksheet where you're not going to run into that problem. Just one last thing before we go, and that is adding pivot charts. Now a pivot chart is pretty similar to a regular chart in Excel. Um, and to add them, you go to the Analyze tab and select Pivot Chart. We have all the usual options here. We'll just stick with the column graph for now. And we can click OK. Uh, make that a little bit bigger. So this is a pivot chart. We have each of our cities along the bottom here. And these are the items that are in the rows. And the key that's on the right hand side here, this is the categories that were the column headers on our pivot table. There's one quick thing to note with pivot charts is that any changes you do to a pivot chart will be reflected on the pivot table and vice versa. So for example, if I was to filter on the sex, then it will reflect in the pivot chart here, but it has also actually reflected in the pivot table itself. And it's not only filters that will have effect on the pivot table if i was to go say select data and say i want to switch the the row and the columns around then i can click this button and now we have each of the categories along the bottom here and the countries on the right but it's also done that to our pivot table and that may not be what you want so you just have to be careful with that just undo that and the same goes for all these little gray boxes everywhere doesn't look the best but if you were to say delete the number of sales then the number of sales have now been removed from your pivot table um, just like it has on the graph but one neat thing with this is that from the pivot chart itself we can easily expand the field so here we have the countries if I was to click expand um, it's actually gone a little bit far for Auckland there so I can collapse that just one and now we have each of the cities within each of the countries and as you saw if I was to expand one more time then we would have each of the age ranges within each of the cities for each of the countries but messy is probably not what you want but it it does allow you to drill down as much as you need on the pivot chart itself you don't have to have separate pivot charts showing separate things you can simply change it dynamically on the go as you need to and a pivot chart is just like a regular chart in terms that you can format it as you like as you would any other graph you can come in and change any of the colors do what you want with it you know add trend lines to the graph somehow there we go add trend line basically anything that you can do with a regular graph you can pretty much do it with a pivot chart and our slicer here still works as well so that's probably it for today. There is so much you can do with pivot tables. I think the best way to learn would just be to give it a go, create a pivot table, try all the different options out, uh, see what works for you, see what works for the different data that you have and how you can improve your analysis. And I'll make this spreadsheet available so that people can download it if they want and have a play around. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or have an idea for any other video, then let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.